Ooh, it's not. Is, it, is it recording? Yeah. Okay. So in the acceleration, it's it's. Uh, I was pitch that render up so that's a little more obvious. I haven't. I'm not canceling gravity from it yet, so you try and get it planar. So upside down, right side up, upside down. So that's the acceleration. The gyroscope is. is so <laughs> you, you can see how, how really sensitive, and the latency is pretty good too. It's uh, there's not much, uh, maybe maybe hundred milliseconds tops. Tops. It's it's we'll have to code for Stick it. Stick your hand up a little bit, so I can see the glove too. Oh. Uh yeah here like good. that yeah is that what you want? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna twitch to see if it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the so the latency is pretty good, and this is this is at thirty frames per second, and we're we're dropping a lot. Now that large vector, this is the magnetometer. Mm -hmm. That large vector line there is because that that IMU, I did something something not kind to it, and I broke the magnetometer permanently. I think, so I have to replace that chip. But so this this is this is essentially Earth's magnetic field that you're seeing here. So every one of those things is going to point toward magnetic north, and there are magnets in here. So if I run over it. Ooh, look at mm. that. There's some magnet in there somewhere. And I can tell that because of the way, like these magnets are inverse polarity, mm -hmm. so there are field lines running this way. So if I stick my, my well, use my index finger, if I put my, my prox, or my... Oh, now, cool. And then when I shift to the other side, the magnetic field should jump the other way. That's a little fuzzy. Oh, it's because of my, it's because of my pitch and my roll on my hand there. So... But yeah, I fixed I fixed the last crash. It'll run like this for until I turn it off. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's reading all the IMUs at 400 hertz, uh, the magnetometer at 50. So it's uh, I think I think for the for the for the gesture stuff, uh, I, I I have to cancel gravity out of that so that so that Brent doesn't have to worry about orientation when he when he deals with acceleration, because the quad <clears throat> that's that's the Quaternion render. Um, that, and again, there's <clears throat> there's too much gyro intermix in there. It's not we need to give some attention to the filtering and whatnot because it's it's pitching and rolling way too much given what I'm doing. But it's definitely responding the right way. The orientations are correct. So every single one of those 17 IMUs has has that data in it. I'm only rendering the one for the for mm -hmm. the wrist unit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is the wrist unit, not the metacarpals. Um, so that's uh. It's all, it's all working very well. The kinematic render, you know, until we until we have some kind of a sensible in it three, uh, we're not going to be able to make that make any any good sense. But things behave the right way. I mean, it's, if I can pick pick a let me find a digit that I'm there it is. So, oh yeah. Yeah, you see my finger moving there. Mm -hmm. It's it's the it's I can't point to it without. Yeah, I can. Yep. Yeah. So it, it the kinematic model works. Uh, way to go, Mensa. Um, but there, there's no, the quaternions have, have some, when I turn them on right now, they, they form their idea of down mm -hmm. based on what position the glove is in. And then they, there's no way to change it other than to, I think this is not true. I can do it okay through. No, not yet. So there's no bones or anything indicating what's where. So it's really hard to interpret that render right now. But uh, even if it were correct. Um, but all that data is there coming through like a champ. At, the, at these frame rates, we're doing at least in the neighborhood of 6,000 quaternion calculations per second. And, and there's, we'll probably end up doing more by the time we're done with it. Oh man, that looks gorgeous. Way to go, guys. <laughs> I like the magnetograph. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really useful for finding, uh, <laughs> in fact, there should be there should be about ten amps of twelve volts running through this wire here. I'm gonna grab it and see what happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at that. You can tell the yeah. So high currents are definitely gonna interfere with it, but at the same time, interference is is depending on what you're at, what you're looking for. You know, if you're looking to find current flow and and, and direction, then you can you can find it that way. Uh, it'd be really cool to 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 
go and look at some MATLAB for rendering rendering three dimensional spaces of the mag magnetic fields with with that data. Because if you can, if we assume, and it won't work now with the, with the bad plots, but if we can assume that the hand is a plane, we won't have to make that assumption once the plots are fixed. But if the hand is a plane, you ought to be able to like sweep over a magnet like that and then read all that, read that data out of it and, and, and build a three dimensional bubble, kind of a representation of, of what the magnet is like, you know? So uh, I'm not even doing any auto scaling either. So that, 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 when I come down here, those are neod neodymium magnets. They're incredibly strong. So at plus minus four Gauss, I'm, I'm saturating it at this point, but that, that vector should be able to get I think this sensor supports plus minus 12, and it's at plus minus 2, so that vector line could potentially be up to six times longer. Um, but the, dy the dynamic range is larger, but the, the, the resolution is lower, so that's the trade-off. So, that's north. <laughs> it's all working very well. And it's hard, too, to... to I've, I've been playing this game to try and impart translation without a, without a roll without any any rotation you want, you want to wiggle my finger well i just want i the, the only way that i can see what's on the screen is if i'm right here so i won't oh, see, I see what your hand is doing unless it's by the I screen see. so this this is the gyro output so trying to impart a translation with no with no roll it, it can be done but your brain isn't used to using your hands in that way, so it's really, really hard. Oh, you're, you're, you're. Oh, did I do something? Some of the water in your body is blocking the RF path for now. Oh. I, I, <laughs> I made I made a mistake with the with the RN42, and and I didn't follow the layout recommendations closely enough, so I'm, I'm dumping a lot of my RF emission right back into my ground plane, so the signal is really weak. So if you if you stick a piece of meat now between in the rf path mm -hmm. you, you drop you just call me a piece of meat <laughs> i know i'm just kidding <laughs> so over here uh in this window uh can you can you get that okay yeah yeah that's just fine so in this window you can see the uh let me cut the verbosity down a bit there we go so now we won't get the frame drop messages all right so those are all the sample counts for those imus uh i've got let's see sequence number thirty thousand. Or that, or so that's that's how many frames, how many frames of data I've sent to to, to uh, MHB, I guess, Maneuver mm -hmm. Nose Bridge. Uh, um, yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, I've run like 13 million, 13 million bus operations and no failures. Wow. So I, I, I think it's safe to say that that code is tight. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I've flooded the queue 5,200 times, 5,300 times. That's the bit rate to the module. So with our, with our legend size at present, that's, those are our constraints. So that's it.